Hello, my name is Joe Jankar, and I'm an education specialist for our HIM department at the College of St. Scholastica. We're glad you're viewing our presentation, and we hope you'll find it useful as you move forward with your education and careers. Joining me in this presentation will be Pam Oaks, our HIM undergraduate program director, as well as our department chair, David Mark. We'll give a brief overview of the College of St. Scholastica, our HIM department, and then discuss the changing landscape of the HIM profession. This is what our college looks like, located at the tip of Lake Superior in Duluth, Minnesota. Very green and nice in the summer months, looks a little bit different in the winter. Brief history, our college um, launched the first bachelor's degree program in health information management back in 1934, and at that time, the program was, for, was referred to as medical records technology. As medical records technology has evolved and developed, St. Scholastica has remained at the forefront, offering the first bachelor's distance program in 1981, the first online master's in HIM, and the first master's program accredited by KHAM. Some of the categories of HIM department services that we currently offer are undergraduate degrees in health information management online and traditional, as well as a graduate degree in an all online format. In addition to our undergraduate programs, we offer a graduate degree in health informatics, and that is also online. Our department also offers MOOCs and additional training options for online students and other individuals worldwide. The mission of our college is shaped by the Catholic Benedictine heritage. The College of St. Scholastica provides intellectual and moral preparation for responsible living and meaningful work. And our vision is to be widely recognized as a premier educator of health science professionals who are known for disciplinary excellence, multidisciplinary respect, cultural fluency, and thoughtful leadership. My name is David Mark, and I am the chair of the Department of Health Informatics and Information Management at the College of St. Scholastica. I'm going to share with you some information on how data is changing the health information management profession. As many of you know, in 2009, the High Tech Act was enacted as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. One of the big disruptors of the High Tech Act was the widespread adoption and implementation of the electronic health record system, the EHR, in hospitals as well as in medical practices across the country. This was a major disruptor because it changed the way we do healthcare, particularly the way we collect and use healthcare data. With this, it changed a whole slew of roles and responsibilities of those professionals that are working and managing that, that data and those systems, largely the health information management professionals. In 2015, Dr. Ryan Sandifer, myself, as well as others, published a survey where we looked at HIM workforce trends. What this survey did is it looked at the trends in different tasks of, with regards to what HIM professionals are doing today versus what they see will be the greatest changes in what they do 10 years from now. What HIM professionals saw was that they anticipate they will spend a lower percentage of their time on diagnosis and procedural coding in the future. Of those that were ranked in terms of the tasks that they spend the most time on, coding was number one. However, it only ranked in about the middle for what they anticipate they'll spend the most time doing 10 years from now. Leadership, teaching, and informatics were identified as the tasks that they see the most significant increases in terms of their roles and tasks they anticipate they'll spend time on in the future. This highlights the trend that we're seeing in the HIM profession, moving to, towards more technical roles and skills, interacting and using data in different ways, as well as building um, opportunity and more leadership roles. While other tasks may become more automated, including things such as um, diagnosis and procedural coding. Another study conducted in 2017 by myself and others was published that looked at job posting data from Indeed.com. 
to identify what are the current needs in terms of education, skill set, as well as trends in terms of um, categories of jobs that employers are looking for right now. What we found is that about 25% of the job postings were looking for employees with an associate degree, while about 75% of those of job postings were looking for uh, potential candidates that had a bachelor's degree and above. This just emphasizes that employers are currently looking for um, candidates that have at least a bachelor's degree and there's growing opportunity for those with a master's degree. Although those with an associate's degree, we may, may begin to see a decline in the uh, available positions that um, uh, are looking for preferred qualifications with, with an associate's degree. So it emphasizes the need to potentially consider advancements in education moving into uh, bachelor's and master's degrees for, for those looking for opportunity in the HIM profession. This study also looked at how these job postings map to different job categories, as well as whether the jobs are at an entry, mid, level, advanced, or mastery level. One thing to note is if you look at the job category for operations, medical records, administration, we find that the bulk of the job postings fall within that category, with many of them falling um, in the mid-level. These would be the jobs that we're seeing are available mainly to those with an associate's degree or a uh, bachelor's degree. So still, bulk of the jobs fall within that category. However, what we're seeing is a trend where there are, there's growing opportunity for those in more an advanced and mastery skill set within that job category of operations, medical records, administration. Also, there's growing opportunity in informatics and data analytics, as well as education and communication, but those types of jobs require either an advanced or mastery level of, of skills. This just further emphasizes that certain job categories would require a higher level of education, although there's still a, a level of opportunity for those at a mid-level or entry level with regards to operations and medical record administration. Another study conducted in 2018 by Dr. Ryan Sandifer uh, looked at uh, survey responses from uh, respondents that either are working in a clinical setting, so those would be those working in uh, hospitals, um, as well as like uh, government community health centers. Um, this includes hospitals both in rural, urban, or more suburban areas. Also, there was a segment of non-clinical um, uh, respondents to the survey. These would be individuals that are I working in the IT vendor space, clinical research companies, insurance companies, retail pharmacies, and so on. What this survey did is it, it asked respondents to um, basically identify the HIM skills and competencies that align with the future health information management needs and to indicate the specific education level that would be required if they were hiring someone with a particular skill set. What was found is if you look at the bottom of the, that graph with regards to the coding row, you can see those in the clinical sector found that uh, the majority responded that for future HIM professionals, they would need an associate's degree or below um, to, to perform well in coding. However, that was split. There was also about an equal number of, of respondents that said they would need a bachelor's degree or above to succeed in that area. This is in, in contrast to those in a non-clinical setting that LAR overwhelmingly saw individuals need to have a bachelor's degree or above, not just in coding, but all of the areas in terms of, of, of skill. In the clinical setting, we find that those that have a bachelor's degree or above are um, wanted and needed in skills related to informatics, information technology, analytics, and so on. So what this um, reveals is a growing opportunity for all areas of skill set with the advancement of education. Whether you proceed to have a role in coding, there's going to be opportunity for advancing in those coding roles, or if you're looking to move into other emerging areas of, of opportunity, 
this would require advancing your level of education into a bachelor's degree or above so that employers would seek you out as uh, a viable candidate to fill these skill sets. We're seeing convergence of two disciplines occur uh, as well. These are convergence between the health information management discipline as well as the health informatics discipline. Many job roles are requiring greater technical skills, skills around uh, databases, analytics, the development of technologies to better manage and use health information. This is why we're seeing this convergence of HIM as well as health informatics. Health informatics really em emphasizes those technical skills, while HIM tends to emphasize more the people, the processes, and the management of that, those people and the processes related to that technology. So the convergence is happening quite naturally. We're seeing a lot of HIM professionals move into this health informatics space, and that makes complete sense. They have an understanding not just of those technologies, of the people, the processes, the flow of information. So as they gain more technical skills through advancing their education or through um, on-the-job training, they are finding that they move, can move easily into these health informatics roles. So the transition is natural and it's occurring and it's ripe for opportunity for HIM professionals to move into this space. Hi, my name is Pam Oaks, and I'm the Undergraduate Program Director here at the College of St. Scholastica and the, in the Department of Health Informatics and Information Management. I would like to share with you today a little bit about uh, HIM jobs related to data. As you can see on the existing slide, there are very many jobs related to uh, data for the HIM professional. The slide is small, but note that there's jobs all across the board from entry level to intermediate all the way to advanced. So there's uh, numerous roles uh, growing and currently in existence for us as HIM professionals. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the skills necessary for such jobs. We need both the hard skills, the technical skills, as well as the soft skills, which can help us share our message about data. Hard skills such as uh, database uh, skills, developing databases, using databases, data preparation and manipulation. How do we get that data so that it's of high integrity uh, before we start mining that data? Analytics, looking at data and making decisions, analyzing the patterns through data mining, and offering information from that data that can help our uh, organization make good decisions uh, both for the organization itself and the patients. Soft skills. We need more than just those technical skills. We need the soft skills as well. Can we use this data for problem solving and critical thinking? As we as professionals look at all of this uh, healthcare data that's collected through the electronic health record, can we use it and solve problems um, with that data? It's very important, right along with those technical skills. Can we communicate what we're seeing in the data through written and oral communication? We want to be clear. We want to be able to share what we're learning and seeing in the data. Working with others. Maybe we're going to work with IT, with the programmers, with clinicians, with management. We need to be able to work with a number of other people and use good teamwork skills to uh, succeed in these roles for the HIM professional having a strong work ethic, keeping in mind that this data belongs to our patients. We wanna use it responsibly, we wanna uh, respect their privacy, we want to uh, ensure that we use this data in the most proper manner. Having a positive attitude and using our time wisely are also important for us in these very important roles where we are analyzing the data that comes in on our patients and for our healthcare organizations and using it to make decisions. So both hard skills, those technical skills, and the soft skills are very important. I wanna share some of the information on this slide on the importance of the soft skills. In particular, there's the third bullet down where it says employers tend to recruit for attitude and train for skill. That is um, actually a great quote for all of us who are entering um, new roles in the HIM profession. 
So as students graduate from their current programs, it's good to know that employers realize that they will have to train new employees at whatever level they are on new skills, but they really value that attitude, positive attitude, um, good communication skills, ability to work with others, all of those soft skills that were on the previous slide. So this is great news for, for new grads. Uh, they can go out there and show the enthusiasm they have for these roles and have a great chance and opportunities at success. So students that are better equipped with hard and soft skills are likely to survive and succeed professionally. Students who succeeded at the workplace have the right attitude, personality, and behavior. Students do need to understand the basic expectations of employers in order to present themselves accordingly. So understanding what employers want in the roles that are, um, are opportunities for, for HIM professionals. And both faculty and students should be open and receptive for honing those soft skills in order to survive and succeed in the corporate world. So both faculty and students need to look at what it is our industry is needing, uh, both with technical skills and those soft skills. And I really enjoy this um, quote by Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. We learn best once we're doing the work, right? We, we involve others in what we're doing and that helps them learn the, what the data means and what our role is as HIM professionals, bringing that data to the point of information that can be used in the decision-making process. Just some considerations as you're looking to advance your education and uh, get some of these new roles that are out there for the taking, let's do your research. When you're looking to advance your education, look at what uh, programs your current uh, educational program would, would advise. Ask your faculty, ask your program director, what different directions are available to you? One of those things that can help is, uh, or a tool that can help is something called an articulation agreement or transfer guide. These guides show what courses you've taken at your school. Um, of those, which ones will transfer to another program, a four-year program, um, so you can get your bachelor's degree. Sometimes that works with other, other programs as well. Maybe you're in a certificate program and a transfer guide or articulation agreement may exist between your school and another school to advance to an associate a degree or a bachelor's degree. So ask about those articulation agreements and transfer guides while you're a student and see what options are uh, easily available to you where you can actually see exactly how you proceed. Also important is accreditation. Most colleges are accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, and that, that agency accredits the entire college and all the programs within it. There is another accreditation through KHIM, which stands for the Council on Accreditation for Health Informatics and Information Management Education. You want your program, whether, um, whether it's a two-year program or a four-year program, to be accredited by KHIM so that you are eligible to sit for the credentials of the RHIT and the RHIA. So that is something to look at. You don't want to attend a school that is not KHIM accredited thinking that you'll be eligible for example for the RHIA exam and then get done with classes and find that you are not. So be sure to check on accreditation. Professional practice experiences are a part of accredited programs, KHIM accredited programs. So be sure to ask about the expectations for that professional practice experience. How long is it? One week, two weeks, four weeks? How is it handled? Is it uh, handled throughout your academic career? Is it uh, a more concentrated, focused time frame on site? What sites do you use? And also, what assistance is available as you set up those professional practice experiences? Does the college and faculty in the HIM or HIT program help you to set up those uh, professional practice experiences? Um, or are you expected to do that on your own? That's an important question to ask. Uh, most schools will give you some assistance with that. And that is important because it is hard to just approach a facility uh, without your college backing you to, to get that uh, professional practice experience. So do look for that. And then look at the department. What, what are they involved in? What are the faculty involved in? What does the college do? Uh, what's their expertise? Uh, are the faculty presenting? Are they publishing what they know? 
Are they uh, keeping in touch with the practical work world? What's their professional involvement? All of those things can assist you in determining a program. And then also student support resources. What does the program do to support their students? Are they, uh, do they help with uh, career services and finding open positions in uh, interviewing and resume writing, uh, social media, transferable skills? Do they offer student memberships? Do they work with students to get to conferences, professional conferences? Uh, do they do some research with students or publications with students? Are there opportunities for shadowing and uh, projects in the, in the community? So look for those things uh, as you look for a program where you can continue your education and advance your career. And finally, I just want to mention that we will continue to collect massive amounts of healthcare data. The HIM profession is a great profession to be in. It's a lasting profession that does constantly change. It is something that uh, you need to be excited about change because uh, the, the way we collect data, the types of healthcare that is happening, the insurance and the payers, all of that is constantly changing. But that gives an HIM professional multiple opportunities to um, start out in a, in a role and grow professionally. There's a need to find better ways of using that, all that data to benefit healthcare. So we as HIM professionals can help healthcare organizations use that data better so that they can have stronger organizational outcomes as well as better patient outcomes. And HIM is pivoting to cover this need by advancing technical skills of their graduates. You'll see more courses in, uh, in those technical skills such as database management and statistics and data mining, data analytics, uh, visualization. But at the same token, we still need to make sure that our professionals have strong communication skills, uh, good teamwork skills, uh, have good problem solving and critical thinking skills. So the technical skills and the soft skills that the health information management programs have and teach their students are very important for the job growth and uh, opportunity growth of our graduates. So you as an HIM student are positioned to fill the need in healthcare to advance the use of data and advance in the HIM profession. So I encourage you to consider advancing your career, getting as much education as you can, using your education to really help out healthcare organizations to provide uh, stronger patient care through the use of all that data we're collecting through the electronic health record and making sure that information is kept secure and respected um, for all of the patients who are getting care. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to Joe, David, or myself. You can see our email addresses here on the slide, and we'd be happy to uh, correspond with you via email or give you a phone call, uh, talk to you that way. We can do something uh, like Zoom even if you'd like, and we can show you some other information from our program. Don't hesitate to contact us and good luck as you advance your HIM career.